modify, modify, incentivize, modify, modify. You may remember hiding behind the sofa when the aliens came on in Doctor Who, and especially when the Cybermen arrived. These guys were seen as one of the doctors and indeed the Earth's worst enemies. This was because the Cybermen wanted to change everyone by modifying us and changing our behavior. Now, this was something we were afraid of. In fact, we were terrified of. Changing our behavior and changing our mindset was definitely something we didn't want to do. However, if you look at COP26 and the problems we have with global warming, we can surely all agree that we need to change not only our behavior, but also our mindset. Now, you may have seen the advertisements for smart meters on TV, where the advert claims if everyone in the UK had a smart meter, the savings that we'd have in emissions would equate to planting 10 million trees or taking 600,000 cars off the road. Now, I thought about that for a minute and let it sink in. 10 million trees or 600,000 cars. The more I thought about it, the more curious I became as to how smart would this meter have to be in order to be able to do this? How can a meter reduce our energy consumption? Then I saw in small print, now what does that say down there? Consumer action required. Okay, so what the smart meter actually does is it brings the meter dials out of the cupboard and displays it on a dashboard. This one here is the one I have at home. It's a dashboard showing me exactly how much electricity I'm using. Now, everyone I know who has one of these tries to reduce their electricity use. They go round, switching everything off, looking at the meter. They then go round, switching things that are on standby off, trying to get the meter to read zero. It starts to become like a game to keep the dial as low as possible, and the incentive is not only in reduction of energy costs, but also assisting with reducing global warming. Now, this idea was so impressive, I, I, I looked up um, behavior modification using gamification and incentivization. And the smart meter did exactly what the science tells us it will. And that is, if you can see your energy use, you'll make a game and enjoy trying to reduce it, especially since you're incentivized by lower bills and indeed saving the planet. I can now understand why we're given these for free, so that we as a country can change our mindset and modify our behavior so as that we reduce our energy consumption, hence assisting in the country's net zero target. So when we're at home, we have a dashboard that tells us exactly our energy use. We know our costs and are incentivized to reduce them. So when we're at work and we all have a net zero commitment, I'm certain we all know exactly how much greenhouse gas our companies are producing at any given time, especially as we're incentivized by cost, reputation, and even regulation to do this. Now, we'd have a simple dashboard monitoring it, right? Yeah, of course we would. Now, I asked around, and despite how important this journey to zero is to our industry and the planet, I couldn't find anyone who had a dashboard and could tell me their real-time emissions. Everything seems to be happening in the future when it's someone else's turn to implement it. At Globally and Sea, we're proud 
of our precision tools that make up Slingshot and of our agile mindset along with our journey to zero, which I'll come back to in a little while. I, I, I asked the Slingshot development team, could they make me a dashboard to show our scope one and two emissions? They said they could if I explained what it was. So I'm sure everyone on this call will know what scope one, two and three greenhouse gas emissions are, but simplifying it, each scope into a sentence. I, I said, uh, scope one, uh, all the greenhouse gas emissions from plant and equipment owned by us. Scope two, uh, all greenhouse gas emissions associated with the energy we purchase. And scope three are the greenhouse gas emissions from everything else we buy or do across the entire supply chain. Now, what we did is we made this. This, what, this was actually the first step towards a fully integrated dashboard and real-time greenhouse gas carbon footprint for our scopes one and two as per ISO 14064 that we, both we and our customers could use. This is helping us to understand our journey to zero is allowed us to challenge ourselves to set a really challenging time scale to be net zero by 2025. Or in fact, even sooner, if we can resolve some of our emissions. As what we want to do is ensure we actually reduce our emissions as much as possible, rather than, as, as any of us could, just calculate them and buy some carbon credits. What we decided to do is to ensure we reduce every scope one and two emission as low as we can, as soon as we can, along with a challenging backstop of 2025, which is actually five years before the majority of the industry. We've also made the commitment to monitor and measure wherever we can our suppliers' greenhouse gas emissions and to include scoring of greenhouse gas emissions into our evaluation of our suppliers. We decided the best way to do this and to ensure we get the most reduction in our supply chain is to assist our suppliers in reducing their own scope one and scope two emissions. And this in turn will allow us to demonstrate to our customers and hopefully allow us to assist our customers not only to reduce their scope three, but help our customers with plant and equipment improvements that will reduce their overall greenhouse gas emissions for their scope one and twos. But coming back to scope three, remember everything else, the, the really tricky bit. Now, as an example, Take this chair. This chair forms part of our scope three. We need to understand the emissions associated with the metal, the emissions associated with the plastic. How does it get here? So you can quickly see how difficult this can be. So in order to effectively monitor and pass proof of carbon emissions, carbon credits, and even taxation data across the uh, entire supply chain in both a quantum safe and GDPR compliant secure way. The best solution for this is distributed ledger technology, or blockchain for short, which if you're not familiar with blockchain, it's a way of storing information that is proving the information to be true. You can visualize it in a simple way of a book or ledger with page numbers, which in blockchain terms is the block header or the order of the blocks. And the information on the pages of the book is the payload of the block. Then each block is independently verified through a distributed system of five levels of validation of that data. To do this, we made a strategic partnership with Dragon Chain, 
a software company who are now responsible for managing the Disney blockchain software, and importantly, hold the interchain patent for distributed ledger technology. Now, in a similar way to the smart meters are given away by the UK government, Disney realized the best way for blockchain to be adopted is by open sourcing it. Open sourcing means that the software is available for anyone to use or to improve. We've taken this open source software and worked with Dragon Chain to create a distributed ledger greenhouse gas carbon tracking system that will allow scope one, two, and three to be passed in a fully GDPR compliant and quantum secure manner across the entire supply chain. This allows for fully transparent and provable greenhouse gas and carbon accounting, allowing us accurate trading of carbon credits and provable emissions, reporting both internally and to regulators and customers. Some of you may have heard that blockchain consumes a huge amount of energy to process transactions. Another reason we chose to partner with Dragon Chain for our carbon tracking system is the unique architecture of the platform. Because of this, Dragon Chain is one of the most energy efficient blockchains today using fractions of a watt per transaction. So, not only are we developing all of the precision tools for a provable carbon tracking system, but we can provide this in an efficient and responsible way. Currently, there are limited examples in our industry of blockchain being used. In the cases where it has been used, along with its smart contract capabilities, it's successful proven events and securely moved data across the supply chain in a GDPR compliant and quantum secure manner. In other sectors and industries, blockchains widely used where information is required to be passed across the supply chain and has brought great trust and transparency in the available data. And the use of this data has allowed efficiencies to be realized. Now, if you consider, back to the chair, and everything we need in scope one, two, and scope three, the trust that we need in the information provided is huge. So we are now incorporating distributed ledger technology into our slingshot platform to bring true reporting of greenhouse gas emissions carbon credits, along with a simple real-time carbon footprint dashboard. We're developing this even further to allow our suppliers to pass accurate and immutable data to us and to allow us to pass this emissions data on to our customers. Looking at global ENC's timescale for net zero compared to many others, made me think about the current reduction of greenhouse gases. All I see is projects that are many years away, often citing they'll be using technology that doesn't exist yet. While I agree we definitely need these technologies, it made me think that if we can measure things now, why not start reducing emissions now? using the skills, tools, and technologies that we have. In the true spirit of our challenger heritage, mindset, and agility, we at Global ENC looked at what are the biggest greenhouse gas emitters on the platform. And unsurprisingly, it's turbine engines, fired heaters, flare rates. Now, Greenhouse gas emissions from these can be reduced by process optimization and reliability improvements. So we've developed a short-term, medium-term, and long-term view of our service offerings. Now, short-term, and by short-term I mean today, we're providing emissions for printing of our customers' assets, 
We're optimizing turbine engines. We're doing process optimization around fired heaters and flow rate by general process optimization and reduction. So we're realizing emissions reductions today and immediately by doing these things. In the medium term, the solutions we've got are electrification, floating wind and tidal. We're carrying out in parallel with the short term um, solution. We're bringing these things in as feed studies to then be implemented in the next three to five years. While at all times looking at the longer term solutions of hydrogen, carbon capture storage and any of the emerging technologies as they become available. But right across this, all times across this, we have the precision tool of our live dashboard and immutable proof of past results recorded on the blockchain. So we at Global ENC have overcome our fears. We've modified our behavior. We've changed our mindset. And this has enabled us to reduce our emissions. We challenged ourselves to do something now. We made a policy to be net zero by 2025 at the latest. We stopped kicking change down the road. We challenged ourselves to develop the tools, mindset, and services to monitor, report, and reduce emissions. So knowing that you can start to reduce your greenhouse gas emissions today, and that Global ENC have a team in place along with a distributed ledger carbon tracking system to prove your reduction to stakeholders, including your customers and regulators. We invite you to challenge us to help you reduce your emissions. We are now ready to accept this challenge, ranging from footprinting to optimization to full electrification.